Unit 6, Day 1, Bisectors of a Triangle. When you're trying to find the distance from a point to a line, you need to determine which length you're actually looking for. From this point to this line, there are several different distances that we can draw. If we were to measure all of these segments, none of them would be the same but that point has not moved in relation to the line. So we need to come up with a concrete definition of how to find the distance from any given point to a line. So the way we find that is by finding the length of the perpendicular segment from the point to the line. We learned in a previous unit that given any point and any line, there is only one segment that can be perpendicular to the line that goes through that point. So given this segment, if we measure this, that is how we define the distance from this point to that line. Concurrent lines are three or more lines that intersect at the same point. So here we have this red, orange, and blue line that all intersect at one point in common, and that point is called the point of concurrency. A perpendicular bisector is a segment, ray, line, or plane that is perpendicular to another segment at its midpoint. We've talked about the idea of a midpoint. We have P, the midpoint of segment AB, because it cuts it into two equal segments, AP and PB. Then we have this line CP that goes through that midpoint, but it's also perpendicular. Therefore, we would call it a perpendicular bisector. If we were to take the three perpendicular bisectors of the sides of the triangle, taking side AB, and if we were to find the midpoint, and then draw the perpendicular segment, take side BC, find the midpoint, and draw the perpendicular segment, and with AC, find the midpoint, and draw the perpendicular segment, all three perpendicular bisectors would intersect at one point. We call that point the circumcenter, which we've labeled with P. A special property of the circumcenter is that it is equidistant from the vertices of the triangle. That means the length of segment PB, PC, and PA are all equal to each other. The diagram below tells us that E is the circumcenter of triangle ABC. So we have this point E, which is the intersection of the perpendicular bisectors of the sides of the triangle. Segment EF is perpendicular to and it bisects segment BC so that BF and FC are congruent. Segment ED is perpendicular to and bisects segment AB so that we have AD and DB are congruent to each other. We're missing the third perpendicular bisector because ABC happens to be a right triangle so that third perpendicular bisector actually just ends up being on the hypotenuse. So when we're trying to label here, segment DA here is congruent to segment DB. Segment BF over here is congruent to segment FC. And then the special property that the circumcenter is equidistant from the vertices. We have segment BE which is the distance from the circumcenter to vertex B, needs to be congruent to EA and EC. If AD is equal to 6, BF is equal to 8, and CE is equal to 10, what is the perimeter of triangle ABC? Well, we know that these are going to be congruent, so this is also 6. FC is also going to be 8. And EA is also going to be 10. <clears throat> Therefore, we can find the perimeter by adding up all the side lengths. 6 plus 8 plus 10. And since we have two of those, multiply each one by 2. Then we get 2 times 24, and that gives us a total of 48 units.
they don't specify what unit, so we're just going to put a U for general units. An angle bisector is a segment, ray, line, or plane that bisects an angle. So we have this angle QRS and it gets bisected by this line RT. So it's going to cut this angle in half. So that angle QRT and angle TRS are congruent to each other. If we were to find all three angle bisectors for the three angles in a triangle, so we have this segment BP bisects angle B into two congruent angles. This segment CP bisects angle C into two congruent angles. And segment AP bisects angle A into two congruent angles. All three of those angle bisectors will intersect at a point called the incenter, and that we've labeled with point P. A special property of the incenter is that it's equidistant from the sides of the triangle. So segment PD, and again, when we're talking about the distance from point P to the side BC, we have to bring in our definition of the distance from a point to a line as the perpendicular segment. So this segment PD is congruent to segment PF, congruent to segment PE. All of those lengths would be equal. We use the diagram shown, and it tells us that G is the incenter of triangle ABC. If G is the incenter, that means that these segments here, AG, BG, and GC, are the angle bisectors of triangle ABC. So I'm going to go ahead and make these markings to show us which angles are congruent to each other, since we know that those three segments are the angle bisectors, then that'll help us here. Angle GCA, so GCA is talking about this angle here. That's going to be congruent to this one, and we label that GCB. Angle ABG, ABG, that's this angle right here, and that's congruent to this one, we label angle G, B, C. Remember, I know some of us need extra practice on labeling our angles with three vertices, so make sure, kind of like connecting the dots, you're tracing out that angle. Then, lastly, we have, using the special property of the incenter, segment G, D, that's the distance from the incenter to the side is going to be congruent to GE and GF. Now, the last question is asking, what method could be used to prove triangle GFA congruent to triangle GEA? So if we focus on those two triangles, and let me try to highlight them. Um, we have triangle GFA and triangle GEA. So we're talking about these two here. We have this angle is congruent to that one. This side is congruent to that side. We know that this side is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. We also know that because this is a right angle, these are also right angles. Now, if you have two angles congruent to two angles in another triangle, the third angle's theorem lets you say that these angles are also congruent to each other. Now, when you're looking at all the information we have, the only thing we don't know is that segment AF is congruent to AE. So we could say that these two triangles are congruent using angle, side, angle. We could use side, angle, side. We could use angle, angle, side. And we actually have, because these are right triangles, we have the hypotenuse is congruent to itself, and then these legs, so we can also use HL. 
The only one that doesn't work in this case is side, side, side. And again, that's because we don't know whether AF is congruent to AE. That's all for day one notes of unit six. Uh, when I see you in class next time, we're going to work on practice and we're actually going to start our construction unit. So we'll learn how to construct perpendicular bisectors and angle bisectors using a compass.